Today we are reacting to Mark Rober uh, pranks distorted scam calls Glitterbomb Payback and we are reacting to this because the last time I reacted to Mark Rober it was a very good video that I reacted to and also it's our mo most viewed video on this channel so I decided you guys liked it so much so let's watch it again I'm super excited it is a pretty long one though 26 minutes but you know we here for it I hope you guys are here to part two and let's get into the video here and I placed them in this James Bond. I had 100 cockroaches here oh, and I placed them disgusting. in this James Bond style contraption that turns this ball screw and forces them out after a specified time delay. And then the I put heck? it in the lunchbox for camouflage and then I release them in this office. Now you might think that's not very nice, Mark. Some yeah. people are afraid of cockroaches. Trust me, I know. <laughs> And that's exactly the point because this is uh, honestly though um, this is ground zero for disgusting call centers that scams people of their life savings a year ago when i released this video about inadvertently stumbling onto the low level probably should do more than scam. probably should do more than just uh annoying them with a prank probably should like you know legally do something but you know <laughs> i said we were going to glitter bomb our way this all works the way too to the even if it yeah. meant taking this fight to the other side of the globe. And so after a year and a half of planning, we infiltrated not one, not two, not three, but four different scam call centers. We released cockroaches, smoke bombs, stink bombs, glitter bombs, and then of course we hacked their CCTV so we could watch the whole thing unfold. Yeah, this might be a little bit well, illegal. He might be a limb, I mean, uh, national adventure, and he might be admitting to some illegal things. because. I'm sure hacking into CCTV cameras is a, a a law that you're breaking. I'm just saying, but you know what? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm here for it. Of these four massive call centers. Now, why would we go after this $20 billion scam industry? Well, we're doing it for the 60 million people who've lost money to scammers in the past year. But more specifically, we're doing it for Bessie, who you might recall from my previous video when I detailed exactly how one of these scams worked. You're know, like my granny, Miss Bessie. Do you know this? Yeah. She was like one of my closest. Oh. I used to share each and everything with her. Basically, it Why with does she have like a Indian accent here? Yeah. Just saying something. They pay you something? Yeah. charge two hundred dollars for something, but if you call back, you could dispute the charge. Then after they call, they eventually get on the victim's computer and importantly have the victim type the two hundred dollar refund amount into a bogus form. Please enter your refund amount. Only they take over and secretly type the amount of twenty thousand dollars, and then they hit enter real quick. Check everything. Is it correct? Oh, no, oh, what kind of human? Oh, I screwed up. I, I can't believe this happens. It's a grandma ma man. Come on, how does this happen? Like, uh, like no, I mean, like, how did, uh, like, do do you live with yourself from doing this? Like, honestly, these people are crazy. I'm, it was supposed to be a a two hundred in there. Oh, God almighty. I'm exhausted. I can't do this. My mind is absolutely please fried. Account. Please check your account. Did you really receive that money in your account? Then they take her to a totally fake spoofed bank account page where it looks like because of Bessie's mistake, they just sent her $20,000 instead of 200. Oh my God. Plus 20,000. Oh, boy. yeah. Please save my job, ma'am. If I'll not earn for my family, my family will die due to hunger, due to starvation. Oh, yes, please, of course. I mean, I mean, that might actually be true. Because, you know, there are bad conditions. Are you just scamming? You might just be scamming to make, a, you know, to actually put food on the table. But still, a scum. That's still such a terrible thing that there's no excuse. Now, how do I fix this? And now you can see how he's weaponized her empathy. Now to fix her mistake, how she'd be willing to go to the bank and withdraw what she thinks is an extra $20,000 in cash, when in reality, it's $20,000 of her hard-earned savings. And she's gonna send it in the mail to a heartless scammer. Now in case you think they've gotten a lot nicer over the last year, here's another call from a few weeks ago where the scam is to pretend they're from the government and there's some missing taxes that are owed. I, I just retired as a state. That's why I don't. I, I, and then I would honestly, for me, I don't answer my phone unless I know that number. Well, it could be important to people calling me. They probably, but I just. <laughs> and I get so much scam phone phone calls. It's like so weird. Like, like once a day at least, and I don't know why. August. So my retirement hasn't been very good so far. And after today, I know it's not your fault, but it's worse now. 
Oh, um, I'm, I'm so I say, sorry I to hear that. I would rather just pay it. Otherwise, I'll be worrying about it, and it, I'll be worse in my health. You know what I he mean? He knows like, that it's a cancer. Or pain. even if I have to pay it in two parts. A person parts. who has so an scanner, illness. So the scanner places her on hold to talk with the authorities and to see if there's just something that could be done to help her out. Thank you so much for holding the line, ma'am. Authorities. Now. I just had a word with the higher authorities, and I informed them uh, about your situation, and they are also concerned about your health. So concerned, in fact, she'll only have to send these scammers $2,000. Actual amount found out missing in the taxes is 1489 Now, last year's operation was effective in getting a handful of people involved in this scam not only covered in glitter, but also arrested. But the problem was, we discovered these were just the low-level mules and supervisors who would then send the bulk of the money back to the actual scammers in India. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> I feel sad for my And while we did turn over all the info oh we gathered God. to the five major government agencies that reached out Surely to us, Surely not just India. Our goal was to take our glitter <laughs> all the way to the top and either temporarily disrupt or possibly even permanently shut down a few of these terrible call centers. It'd be like a special operation. And every special operation needs a special ops team, a target, and a plan. For the team, I turn back to my good friend Jim Browning, who you recall from last year has a YouTube channel that specializes in reversing the connection of the scammers' computers and gaining access to their CCTV footage. When is there anything else you want to ask? Yeah, I want to know why you scam people. And then another YouTube channel called Trilogy Media would be the boots on the ground in India implementing the pranks, but more on them later. For the target, together we were able to look and gather tons of incriminating information on four different scam call centers. For starters, there's Met Technologies located in Kolkata, India on the fifth floor of this Sounds so official. They've been in operation over 12 years and they've got over a thousand agents. Their owner is Mr. Kunal Gupta and you can even see the rest of their leadership he team here on their public website. And you might ask, well, why would a scam call hey. center have it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a bad uh, Mrs. Mister. It's a marriage uh, scam. And the answer is they all do because they have a very small uh, hey, another Gupta. Public website. And the another Gupta. It's a family a business of scammers. Employees do legitimate call center work. So if they get raided by the authorities, they can point to that small group and say their hands are clean, while the real money making operation runs here behind a secure door. Then we found VRM also located in Kolkata on the 12th floor of this building. They also so I have over 1,000 agents. This sounds like freaking, like, you years, know, like a movie, you know? Like, there's like, like, you know, like, one person wrong me, so we're gonna do a heist. This is literally a heist, except not to target that people crazy. in time zones all still. across the globe. Oh, and allow me to introduce to the world Rajesh and Vidya Goenka, the husband and wife co owners. Next was Anj Info Solutions on the fifth floor of this. And not a husband wife, uh, uh, not a husband wife team. I freaking it, too. Oh, they're all, oh my god, conspiracy theory. Imagine, they're all just one, they're, they're owned by the same person, in And they've been up and running for 11 years with all their key info shown here. They're located just a block away from VRM. In fact, all three of these centers were located within just a few miles of each other. Ah, my, my theory of them just being the same owners, but just different names, you know. scam call centers like this. And finally, there was one more we located, but we're not releasing public information on them yet, and you'll see why in just a little bit. And so once we'd amassed mountains of evidence against all four of them thanks to Jim's handiwork, we hired 10 private investigator types to apply for jobs at each of these centers, and after a few weeks, we had them all in place. Now, in order for them not to arouse suspicion, they had to legitimately scam some people, but we told them to remember the victim's information, and then we would reach out and double any money that was lost. And at first, one of our agents in the VRM call center went against protocol and used his phone to capture some footage for us of the bathrooms and the service Rack and um, whatever this is, brown face TV. Because the next day, some of the security team showed up at his house. Now, luckily, his roommate knew to lie and say he wasn't home, and he was able to escape through the back alley. But they stayed out in front of his house all day and later sent this message saying the director wanted to speak with him and they would pay him handsomely. And of course, he didn't need to be scared. <laughs> Scamming, trying to scam the scammer of the scammer of the person that's in this scam. Yeah, I'm trying to make that funny, but that was terrible. Gathered against them already. So from that point on, we reiterated to the remaining nine to lay really low like a sleeper cell until we were ready to activate the plan. And speaking of the plan, now that we saw what we were up against, we knew we'd have to go full James Bond Q mode with some high-tech gadgetry that could make it past security. 
which is why this first prank yep. is just a water bottle. Kind of. I mean, it can function as a normal water bottle, but if you unscrew just this portion of the lid, it reveals a trough. And if you put military grade putrid smelling stuff in that trough and then screw the lid back on fully, it creates a perfect seal and you can't smell anything. But then at the exact precise moment you want to release a cloud of death, you just twist the lid like this, allowing the smell to escape through these holes and fill the room. And we're using a water bottle because from looking at the CCTV footage, I we really allow them to have water bottles at their desks, so they'll be able to sneak them past security. Plus, no one's going to suspect that's mm. the origin of the smell. Next up, if you take some hand soap and add bad. just a few drops of the same kitchen grade food coloring we used on the Devil's Toothpaste explosion, then when you wash your hands, it will leave them stained for at least a day. Oh, crap. <laughs> we'll leave this in the bathroom, and as a bonus, we'll learn exactly who does and doesn't wash their hands. This next one is the most simple, but also perhaps the most effective. You take a box of Sudafed, and then print out and paste on some of these labels, and convert it to a box of Viagra. Then importantly, you add the name of the boss of the scam call center to the box, like it's his prescription. And then you leave it in the bathroom next to your blue soap. Next up is that custom-built box that can store cockroaches in it. So after a predetermined time delay, the microcontroller controller will trigger the stepper motor which causes the wall to slide along this ball screw. That means if you disguise it in a lunchbox then nothing happens until the timer expires and then suddenly you get a bunch of cockroaches crawling out of a lunchbox. Although you can put more than just cockroaches in here. So some other ideas we had were bees because so we heard India has some species that don't actually sting as well oh. as possibly rats because we already knew from looking at wow. the security footage that once released the rats can make themselves right at home. And using a lunchbox for camouflage is once again a strategic choice because we already knew from our recon work they always make it past security because no one actually checks what's inside. Next up, I love the idea of the chaos that could result if we set off a smoke bomb, but we were concerned that might be crossing a line if the room was too small because like the glitter bombs, I want everything I do to be exciting, but at the end of the day, relatively harmless. So instead, we found these micro foggers that are basically like massive vape pens. And we also noticed motorcycle helmets were allowed onto the floor and yeah. And yes, they so were the probably thinking it's like helmet freaking helmet. bombs or something like that, you know, because like this, and then it would also yeah, detonate know. itself based on no, time. That happens, and finally, yeah. as the PA stay resistance, yeah, we're gonna deliver them it. a package. Only this isn't an ordinary package. It's glitter bomb 4.0, which of course, as we all know, is equipped with a pound of the world's finest glitter and an uncharitable amount of fart spray. <laughs> I can still smell it. <laughs> and so now that our team targeted Sad the player in place, after one and a half years of prep work, it was time to avenge that, that shit uh, and that execute the special battle. operation. Step one was getting the Trilogy Media guys all the way over to India with all the contraptions stored securely in their luggage. Oh my guy stepping foot on Indian soil. <laughs> now safely on the ground, step two was to go pick up those stingless bees that we could put in the lunchbox. But once they'd arrived to the beekeeper, they found out you can't just take a few bees, but you have to take the whole hive. In the car, dude, no. They're gonna get out. Also, apparently, there's no such thing as stingless bees. Oh my god. Oh. Yeah, I was like, how, this is impossible. <laughs> so we punted on that idea and headed to an open air market where we could at least secure some rats. Um, By the way, okay. the Trilogy Media YouTube channel is composed of Ashton, who's a former magician, and Art, who played professional basketball in Russia for eight years. They're just an incredible duo. And speaking of incredible things, this is a good time to point out that the real people of India were just so freaking lovely. It's true that nearly every scam call you get originates from that country, but everyone in India hates these scammers too. They are a tiny, tiny yeah. fraction of the total population, and no one wants to be defined <laughs> So I just in the end, it's mostly there. Had hearts more like Johnny, why. That's an honorary the thing. member of the team and a reformed scammer who's made it his life's mission to scam. do whatever he can to take these guys down, even if that means working some back channels to get our hands on the cockroaches. You, uh, he's still. So with the goods procured, yeah, it was time to meet up with our sleeper that. agents at the hotel to do some final prep on the contraptions, which went about as well as expected. Seriously though, are we gonna test it right here? Right here? Yeah. You can't do it in the bathroom? In 1617. <laughs> Yeah, no, get him okay. in, get him in. Oh, man, man. More than marriage. Yeah, okay, 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 ok
Accounted for, right, everyone? I swear, I would not let you down. We decided the first call center we'd hit would be Anj, and we were feeling optimistic about our chances. And that's exactly when our special operation received its first major blow. So apparently there's this WhatsApp group that 55,000 scammers all across India belong to, so the different scam <laughs> call centers can communicate with each other. And because Johnny was still a member of this group from his I'm former telling days, you, they're all connected. There's, so, there, the there's just gonna be like one person that it has all the call centers. They are leading them all. It's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's a cult. <laughs> Something happened. Kata have seen cuss word trilogy people. We followed them, but the driver drove the car very fast to the Salt Lake side. There was two Indians with them, and they were shooting a movie. So apparently, some scammers had recognized Art and Ashton at the market as the trilogy media YouTube guys because they've confronted a lot of scammers in their five years of making videos. Now, thankfully, just out of habit, Johnny was driving in a way that would make it hard for anyone to tail them. But they still were able to pinpoint their hotel location within about a half a mile. But then it got much worse. Might be they are working with the FBI, so I request all of our brothers to have an eye in Salt Lake. So whenever you see them, you shoot them. Which was super Whoa. devastating because it seemed pretty... You shoot them? What the frick is this guy? It's clear to me that we'd have to scrap the whole operation because while the mission was important, it definitely wasn't worth anyone getting hurt. But when I brought this up to the guys, they'd already discussed Crazy. it amongst themselves and decided this was a cause they were passionate enough about that they were willing to accept some risks. So we decided moving forward, Art and Ashton wouldn't step a foot outside their hotel room, and that's when the second major blow came. Because apparently the group text warning spooked the call scam center so much, they just changed up everyone's assignments, and they were planning on moving all three of our sleeper agents to a new floor where there was no CCTV coverage. But this is where we had a stroke of luck because at the last minute, Johnny thought to have another one of his reformed scammer friends apply for a job. And because he had so much experience on his resume, they hired him on the spot and gave him experience. a more highly trusted role, which meant he could be the one to smuggle in all our gadgets. And so with that, he loaded up, headed in for battle, and an hour later, we had a man on the inside. And by the way, now that we're inside, I'll give you a very quick crash course on what we've learned about how these scam centers operate after watching them for so long. First of all, 90% of the victims are 65 years old or above. I don't understand that either. It's like I YouTube analytics on so scamming. They only make calls during the U.S. working day hours and not on the weekends, because that maximizes their chance the person who picks up will be retired. This is why you never get scam calls on Sunday. They don't have anyone even working the phones. In fact, many of them have an auto-dial prompt that says press 1 if you you're over 65 years old and if you press anything else it just hangs up the most common scam is the Amazon refund scam but they also pretend to be Microsoft McAfee Norton antivirus the IRS Apple bank and on and on it's always changing but it's also always something you've heard of to try and build trust right out of the gate if you want to know how much they make well that information unfortunately is securely held on the boss's computer so we can't get to it Although yeah, the boss probably makes a lot, but uh, other the other people internal cameras, right. you could just watch the boss type his password, and then you'd be able to access their master tracking spreadsheets, which is what we did, and how we know these large call centers make sixty thousand dollars. This is kind of illegal. I mean, eh, not to say it's a year. Just, uh, an opener yeah. will take the initial calls, and they make an average of seven thousand dollars a month. Then, if they keep the victim on the phone long enough, they hand it over to a closer, and they make on average fifteen thousand dollars a month. They never say the word scam or victim. Them, instead referring to them as sales and customers that way they just seem more like a normal office although what i think does that job more convincingly are all the walls plastered with inspirational corporate words like synergy or management or process so that's your crash course on what how they the operate and the ftc that? has put out a list of four signs to help spot a scam and four things you can do to protect against them and i'll link to it in the video description and so now without further ado we kicked things off with the stink bomb water bottle and while that was marinating he went to the bathroom and dropped off the hand soap and the special medication with the boss's name written on the front and it didn't take long for us to get our first hit on the smell what was great though is they all kind of covered their noses subtly in silence so the people next of them wouldn't feel accused well for the most this is part so crazy then a few minutes later we had our Amazing. first bathroom customer who clearly doesn't wash her hands after using the restroom but then we had a second chance with an apparently more hygienic scammer and this time we struck pay dirt as he comes Wait. out trying to figure out what the heck just happened and five minutes what? later you can see he has nothing on his hands right and not long after that we got our first mention of the special pass he has nothing on his hands what do you tell you it worked The 
audio cut out here, but our agent told us they were what laughing the and wondering Tashi? how the boss could possibly leave that lying around. Although it certainly doesn't feel too far off brand, given he uses this as his profile pic on Facebook. <laughs> And at this point, our agent and then triggered movies. the time delay countdown on the cockroach rat and smoke bomb traps so we can now safely make his Go getaway. On, oh. You okay? Yeah. You're safe. Yeah. <laughs> I thought they were just coming. And since they, of course, have no idea what's about to happen, they're still just casually talking about the bathroom. And then a few moments later, the first boxes must have triggered because this guy notices a cockroach and nopes his way out of there. And then he's quickly followed by the second dude. And I okay. love it because now you just randomly see cockroaches start coming in frame. <laughs> and so now that they know what they're up against, they call in the reinforcements with a mop. But it looks like he missed one. Or two. Or three. Actually, five. Where did the mop guy go? Uh, scratch that. Five. And then as a perfectly on cue, right as the mop guy finishes his cleanup, environmentalist so like this animal quite a commotion and draws a crowd. Be like, it takes you them know, a while, they're eventually able to pinpoint the source of the smoke and gingerly take it off the premises. They still would followed soon thereafter be, by our rat friends. Weird. And this is possibly my favorite clip of the whole night, where you see a cockroach lead the way and wander all around as they argue and try and make sense of what in the world is possibly happening. <laughs> And by this point, you can tell the boss is pretty sure they're under attack, but just to remove any sense of doubt, we sent them one final He's package. Mad. He's so and they confused. almost opened it right there, but I guess with everything else that had already happened so far that night, they took it downstairs. And then this happened. Uh, it's an to be in the office. You guys give up? Oh yeah, thirsty for more. Yeah, in fact, there's four of them, and they're uploading this footage to the cloud. They should have just done it. Oh, so annoyed they didn't do it in the office. That'd be so awesome. Five, four, three, two, yes, one. Sir. Activation complete. Recovery sequence initiated. <laughs> <laughs> so after our incredibly successful special operation, we successful. Waited I wish it was an office. That would be have awesome. to wait long. Yesterday, those cuss words sent on solutions a package bomb, and it exploded. And there was a bad smell and sprinkler water, or whatever it was. These guys are playing good with us. I am reminding you guys, Playing they must good. be in between us. We don't even know. And now we had them, because they were paranoid and they didn't know which of their employees might have been compromised. Check the lunch boxes, pocket bags, shoes, ladies' purses. Yeah, they're so well. professional. Even check the water, whether there's some color mixed in it. I assume he's referring to the soap dye here. But be cautious, guys, seriously. They came to bad word all of us, and they are still trying to bust us. After that, there were a few more death threats, so we didn't think it was safe enough to launch our attacks on the other three centers to try and get them shut down. But the beautiful thing is, we didn't have to. Big centers in Kolkata and Delhi are closed from today, as well as Monday, as per the information I got from all my friends. We had created enough confusion and mass panic that not only did the other three centers get shut down, but we got all the large scam centers all across India shut down for a few days too. And if you oh, have that that like forever, how the heck did that stopped $2 million from going from the victims to the scumbags. And I would say that's the perfect ending, but it actually gets even a little better. Once Ashton and Art were safely back home on American soil, they decided to troll that text group with those 55,000 scammers by uploading this gem to the chat. Surprise, surprise, scammers. Art and Ashton over here. No matter how many numbers you remove from this group, we're still watching. Not only that, we've also downloaded every single person's contact information, all 57,000 of them inside this group. We have every single one of your contact you. information. We're submitting it to the FBI in the United States and the CBI here in India. Yeah, so you guys so better easy. run and you better they watch out. Up. And so if you want to see how quickly the scammers started removing themselves, 
They should, that might uh, actually be the terror. That's a terrible idea. You could have caught all of them, all 5,000 of them, all FBI. Now they're just going to change the names, change everything, change. Like, you know, they, they, they probably like. As well as a lot more details of all their work on the ground over in India, you should go check out their video. And not surprisingly, Anj and the other scam call centers eventually opened back up, albeit this time with much tighter security. But they still didn't, and still don't realize probably till this moment, that we have access to their live camera feeds. So Jim improvised a bit, calling them out by their real names without giving away the fact he was just looking at them on the camera. Yeah, hi sir, my name is Carolina Fernandez. I am calling you from the Microsoft. Oh, hi Priya. <gasps> hi. <laughs> you got so scared. I'm a ghost. Idiot. Yeah, I don't Do know, you what... know my father's name. I... What the I... heck? Who are you? Priya. That's what your first question is. Do you know my father's name? <gasps> hi. Who are you? Wait, I'm I want to see. Uh, yeah, I don't do you know, know what... my father's name. I don't know, but is your father proud of you? What do you do? Does, does he think you work for Microsoft? Yes, of course. But you don't work for Microsoft. Did you tell him that? Will I tell you one more name? Yes. So easy. <gasps> oh my God, Sweeney. Sweeney. She, she, why is she happy about this? At least talk to me. Why is she Hello? happy about this? This is a terrible thing. He also managed thing. to change the way their voices sound when they would do outbound calls to you? their potential victims. Who are you? May I know uh, what they would uh, Who are you're, you? you're speaking very strangely. What, what's up? So to see a lot more of that quality entertainment, you should go check out his video. So after all that, we're sort yeah, of in a good news backup situation that. here. The good Pretty news cool. is that because of some developments we've been involved in, the fourth center here is going to be raided by the authorities in India and shut down very, very soon. The bad news is that these other three are still very operational. They made FBI. I can't say here, they don't have anything have in India. They should to come to the authorities like in the India. One. Now you might ask, why Wait. not just privately reach out to the proper authorities in Kolkata where yeah. these three calls centers are located and the answer is that's been tried before and it didn't work while there are many good apples there are a few bad apples that prevent anything okay, from happening yeah. with these guys uh, that, that so where does sense. that leave us yeah, well as they so say the sunshine media. is a great disinfectant <laughs> and here's where you come in we've invested a lot of resources and time and tried to make this video as entertaining as possible in the hopes that you'll consider sharing it for two reasons number one the more people are aware of how these scams work the less effective they become and they lose their power so please they do so much they ones. like and number two give so the more people that see scams. this video and learn about these three specific call centers the more the press will pick it up especially in india heck tweet our videos to the kolkata police this helps out the good apples because the bad ones can't just sweep all the evidence under the rug or quietly tip off the scam center bosses the press and public what can the hold them accountable that? we've seen this tactic work successfully in the past and we have mountains of evidence against all these scam centers if you are with the press or law enforcement Enforcement agency, send us an email to callcenterevidencepack at gmail.com and we'll share everything we have with you. If you combine them, these three centers have been in operation an astounding 29 years and they're still scamming people of their life savings to this day, even right now as we release this video. So let's see what we can do. And depending on exactly what happens, I think I'll either post a follow up video here on my YouTube post. channel or on my other social channels. So subscribe and all that stuff if you want to stay in the loop. Glitter bombs and cockroaches are just hard harmless entertainment but our best chance of working together to shut these guys down for good is by shining a light to foster some accountability thanks for your help now let's make bessie proud honestly though amazing video i want to thank and he's amazing person. Lord VPN oh, for their support okay. on this video. Know. I've been using their service myself for over three years now because they really are the best at this. With Nord, you can surf oh, the Enjoy, be sure to hit that button, subscribe, and share, and let me know if you enjoyed you know, this video. And you know, I'll see this. I generate a ton of information online every amazing. day. And I prefer that information wasn't I sold, amazing or used I? against me in some way. Nord collects and stores absolutely nothing and makes it so others can't either. Plus, if you're traveling and you want your exact same internet experience at home, like to watch all the shows. Well, you get it. Not by not VPN. With this, uh, yeah, you get it. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed. Be sure to like, subscribe, share. Goodbye.